All right, this is uh, going to be another M4 type video. And what we're looking at here, um, this is the, the MOE handguard, the Magpul handguard, and the Magpul scout mount, and the Magpul MOE forward grip. I actually took it off my M4 um, because my little photography table here that has uh, the lighting on it and such just really isn't big enough to hold my rifle so I took this off because what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, what I'm doing for a flashlight. Uh, one of my previous videos I mentioned the uh, Magpul scout mount which you see mounted here. You also see a flashlight here. Um, this is a, a Cree LED flashlight um, and uh, I think that's a UTG flashlight holder. Uh, they're both inexpensive items and they're actually off of one of my AKs. They actually are not going on this M4. I have it on here just for, uh, I was testing clearances, uh, you know, between the front sight mount and the flashlight and such, making, making sure there weren't any issues there. This particular flashlight is Oh, I don't know, it's about 100, probably 130, 150 lumens. Uh, it's aluminum construction, very bright, uh, uses a rechargeable uh, 18660 battery. I don't remember the exact number type designation. It's a very bright flashlight, uh, fairly well constructed from what I can tell, uh, but it is a bit heavy. So I, I wanted to put a light flashlight on the M4 and spent a lot of time looking at uh, different types of pistol lights, uh, the smaller LED output lights with integrated uh, rail mounting capabilities. And I did pick up something which uh, so far I'm extremely happy with. Uh, I'm going to show that in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to uh, show this handguard first with this other flashlight mounted and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Alright, I just went ahead and removed the, this Cree flashlight from the mount. Um, so you, you, the Magpul scout mount uh, mounts the flashlight up pretty high so it you know, sits above the, the front sight post on the, on the M4. And uh, this this flashlight does clear. Um, there's there's no issues there. It works great. I've got easy access to the button. Um, it's just you know in my hand it doesn't feel that heavy, but on the rifle it definitely feels heavy. And I noticed this when I actually put this on my uh, AK. Um, that's kind of a heavy rifle anyway, because it's all primarily steel constructed. But that's not uh, something I wanted to put on the M4. So. Um, let's see, I'll we'll show you what I purchased, and we'll go from there. Alright, I just um, picked this up off of eBay, this little kit right here. It's a uh, Novatech uh, model SPL120, and I don't believe this is a complete kit, but this is a, a, a military issue version that I bought, obviously used. And it is in, I believe, coyote brown or tan. Uh, this is what I received in my kit, which was basically the the uh, 120 lumen flashlight, a uh, TD Arms mount, and then a secondary tail switch with a pressure pad. Um, I think the complete kit actually has a uh, um, an IR cover for the end of the flashlight. Um, I did not get that with this, this particular kit. It also didn't come with a flashlight and it uses a single CR123 battery. Um, I like this for several reasons. Um, this particular kit I got it's in like new condition. Um, I got this kit for $38, so uh, it's a high quality USA made 
120 lumen flashlight. It's extremely small and light. And I'll put a tape measure here. Um, with the tail cap that's on here, it's uh, about three and a half inches long. So it's, it's very small. Uh, very well made. Um, quite impressed with that. The mount is an Israeli made mount. Very high quality mount as well. The tail cap with the pressure switch on it actually has uh, not only the pressure switch, it actually has a push button switch on it as well. So um, you've got to, you can use the pressure switch or the, uh, the push button switch on the cap. Now, obviously, this is this is a desert tan color, and it doesn't. My M4 build is all black, so I'm actually um, at a minimum. I'm going to paint the, um, the the TDI mount black. I may leave the flashlight just the color it is because the majority of the flashlight is going to be inside the mount. So. Um, uh, I did a bit of research with these online um, and uh, couldn't find anything really negative um, about these particular flashlights. Um, and since they're military issue kits, um, I definitely feel very comfortable with that as well. I'm going to go ahead and put the flashlight into the mount so you can uh, see what that looks like after I get it in the mount. Now before I get to the mount, um, I wanted to uh, show you the, the end of the flashlight. They're obviously they have uh, O-rings on them. Uh, these are uh, waterproof down to a certain number of feet. I don't remember exactly what Novatex website says, but on the inside here, um, there's another internal spring um, that the uh, CR123 battery goes into. Um, very impressive construction, um, you know, right on lines with, with uh, Surefire flashlights. Although I know some people don't like those. Those are very, to me, they're very well built flashlights as well. And uh, again, this is, this is an LED flashlight. Um, I'm not sure if that's a Cree LED, and I can't really show the brightness because I don't have any CR123 batteries right now. I guess I kind of expected this to show up with a battery, but um, that's all right. I ordered some rechargeable uh, batteries. They're just not here yet. All right, here's the, the Novatech in the uh, T TDI mount. Um... In other pictures I found uh, on the internet uh, that showed the setup with the IR cap. Uh, the IR cap is black and basically covers the whole end right here. Uh, so the only thing that's kind of a, a tan or a goldish color that would be really showing is, is this rear tail cap. Um, my plan is to get some sort of a cap cover, whether it's an IR filter cover or just like a, a flip up scope cover um, that's black basically just to put on this um, it would replicate uh, you know the military look of this particular flashlight better that way and it would uh, you know make more of this flashlight black and I'd only end up with a little bit of the tan color showing I just don't want to jump in and paint the flashlight uh, I know I could I could hit it with some Krylon or I could Duracoat it, um, but uh, I don't uh, know if I want to go down that route right at the moment. So um, that's kind of something I might decide later on down the line, but you know, we'll just see how that goes. Um, uh, definitely going to do the, um, the TDI mount though, because um, that's just plastic. And for, for plastic, I use uh, Krylon Fusion paint. Works very, very well for plastic. Um, you don't need to do a lot of prep work, work on the plastic. It's, it's definitely recommended that you uh, clean it up uh, using uh, wax and grease remover or 
uh, isopropyl alcohol, something like that, to get any type of grease or oil off of the surface. Okay, here's the uh, Novatec and the TDI mount uh, on the upper part of my MOE handguard uh, and uh, Magpul scout mount. It does slide right on. Um, these little uh, spring knobs here, you lift up, slide it on, and when you uh, release them, um, the little crossbar locks into place on the single slot that's on the top of the uh, Magpul scout mount. So it mounts just fine. It's nice and solid. It isn't going anywhere. It's definitely lighter than the other flashlight setup I was playing around with. Now I did notice that, let's see if we can do this here without it falling over. Um, this part right here, uh, this bottom small section of the TDI mount is rubbing against the top of the MOE handguard just a little bit. Not enough to prevent it from going on, but um, it's something that I'm going to have to take a, a, a file to and just file it down. Probably oh, a millimeter or so. Uh, it's not very much. I mean, you can see this is fully seated and locked into place and it went on there. It's just uh, rubbing just a tad bit. And the scout mount is mounted as far up on the uh, handguard as I can get it. So it's a good fit. Um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to use the uh, pressure switch tail cap uh, setup. Um, this assembly here works really great. You can easily get to it. Um, but I definitely like to use the uh, pressure, pressure switch if I can uh, figure out a good place to mount it. Um, I'm kind of leery about things that are attached with Velcro that can come off and flop around. So, um, I'll, uh, I'll post a follow-up to this video when I get a chance to get a battery in it and get some of these components painted. Uh, and I'll come back and, and we'll show you what those look like. Alright, here's the uh, TDI arms um, mount um, after it's been uh, painted black. I used, uh, I actually uh, went out and picked up a couple different cans of Krylon Fusion. Uh, there's a semi, or excuse me, a flat black and a gloss black. I wasn't sure which one of those would match the other components uh, the best. Turns out the flat black Krylon Fusion is the best match for uh, the other Magpul parts, um, and uh, it's very. I've used uh, Fusion on a lot of different other uh, plastics projects. Holds up very well. Uh, lays down very well. Um, you don't have a lot of issues with fish eyes or. Uh, other issues like that, um, of course, assuming your your surface is is prepped properly, uh, also sets up very fast or it flashes very fast. Uh, I let this uh, sit overnight before I uh, handled it, of course, just to to make sure. Now the 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 tricky thing, if you're going to paint something like this, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of you know you have the if you, the inside area, assuming you're going to do the inside area, and you have all of these small little spaces, you know, little crevices and such. And, and when I'm when I'm painting something like that, what I'll what I'll normally do is I will try and get all of the little crevices in the spaces first using short uh, squirts out of the out of the uh, spray can. Uh, you don't want to be too close to the surface. You don't want to put on too much paint because you run the risk of, you know, getting a drip or a run. So uh, I try to get all of those little areas using light coats six to eight inches away from the item. And I'll just keep using light coats until I get all of the little crevices and the recessed areas covered. That's what I do first. Then I'll go back and paint the entire piece. Um, and when you're when you're painting something, it's you know there's there's a whole 
right down there where the uh, allen bolt goes through and, and I just put a small little uh, wooden dowel through there so I can hold the piece and turn it at different angles uh, to shoot the paint and I don't have to uh, worry about uh, uh, touching it with my fingers uh, although I, I wear gloves when I'm, I'm painting everything um, you, you don't want to touch any wet paint so uh, let's see how this looks uh, on the uh, Magpul scalp mount okay I've got everything assembled on this uh, handguard with the uh, Novatac SPL 120 light and the TDI arms mount. You can see uh, at this point I have the actual uh, pressure switch installed and what I did was uh, I snaked the pressure switch wire along the edge of the Magpul scout mount um, down around the front here and wrapped it around and mounted the pressure switch uh, right by the front uh, grip. I I'm not sure if that's an optimum location. I really need to put this back on the gun and, and play around with it. Uh, I'm thinking with the way I use the the, the front grip, um, I don't grip my firearms like the guys at Magpul do. I do it a little differently, but uh, I think this this uh, placement of the pressure switch will allow me to um, uh, engage the light uh, you know using the uh, front part of my hand um, uh, along my index finger and thumb area where it meets up with the switch now it's this is the first time I've really used a light with a pressure switch so uh, this may or may not work out um, I also snake the uh, wire this way. Um, I, one thing is, you know, when I'm running my load out, I got a lot of different gear and pouches and things. I definitely don't want to be snagging the wire. Um, so, um, you know, that makes me even leery about using a pressure switch. But, you know, uh, I'm going to give it a shot and uh, and see how it works out. Uh, again, like like I mentioned uh, earlier on. I got this package. This package came with the rear tail cap pressure switch, uh, which also has a push button on off on it as well. But I also have just the regular tail cap on off switch. So uh, if for some reason this pressure, pressure switch deal doesn't work out or I don't like it, I can just, you know, take the whole assembly off and, and put on the regular tail cap. So um, that's pretty much, you know, what it looks like. You can see how I routed the wire down. Um, it basically keeps it out of the way, uh, minimize any possibility for snagging and such. Um, now I did, uh, obviously when you paint something like, a, like this TDI uh, light mount, uh, it does add thickness to um, the plastic. So actually what I did before I even painted it was I went uh, I went in with a file and um, uh, opened up the the, the uh, rail mounting location a little bit with a file, smoothed it out, opened it up a little bit, so it would be more uh, usable with a little bit of paint on it. And uh, even then, I used a bit of gun oil to uh, get it uh, to slide this on. So, but it uh, it's easily removable. Um, these uh, uh, you can lift up on these two um, uh, little spring-loaded uh, uh, tabs right here and slide slide the, the light mount off. Uh, again, I, I I don't have a CR one two three battery, so I can't I can't comment on how bright this light is. Uh, it's supposedly rated at 120 lumens. Uh, it does use a LED type of light, uh, which is also something that uh, I wanted. Uh, and the whole assembly is extremely lightweight, so low profile lightweight. Now for attaching the, um, the pressure switch, uh, obviously my particular kit did not come with, with any Velcro, so uh, I used some 
3M two-sided tape, uh, which uh, is a very good, durable, uh, all-weather tape. It's actually made for automobile purposes for attaching trim and, and uh, things like that. So it's, it's uh, uh, very durable, uh, holds up well under different uh, temperatures, uh, cold and hot and such, wet rain. Um, should hold up pretty well on the plastic here, but you know, again, that's kind of an experiment, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Now, my uh, my thoughts on this were, you can see how my hand goes up against this. I actually hold my weapon like this, so you can see how my index finger slides right on top of this pressure switch. So with a minimal amount of pressure from my uh, index finger, I can toggle the switch, which you can't see what I'm doing right now. So that's just, those are my thoughts on, on how to do it. Plus with the way I hold this, if I need to engage the switch manually, my thumb's right there. So, I mean, this is, this is how I normally hold it anyway when, uh, with a front uh, pistol grip on it. I have my thumb up here, so it's 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 easily within reach. So, you know, we have this contact switch here, which I can engage, and then this contact switch up here. So I like this setup, at least. I like it right here, right now. Um, we'll just have to see when I get it on the gun, and and uh, I'll uh, I'll try to do a small follow-up video when I get this reinstalled. Um, uh, and add to this video here, so you can kind of see what this looks like uh, on my M4. Okay, here's the last part of the video. I've got the Magpul handguard put back on the M4. And no clearance issues. Actually, I'll just scan over the entire entire gun. I was going to do a uh, different video showing the completed. Uh, gun once it was put together. Nothing special. Um, uh, Palmetto State Armory upper um, stag arms lower Magpul hardware It's kind of a view down the barrel. It's real easy to real easy to get to the secondary switch right there. I mean, this is this is more or less the way I hold hold this uh, rifle. So it's real easy for me to get my thumb to that. So you know, we have this switch and we have the uh, uh, the contact pad right down there. So two ways to uh, activate the flashlight. There's a view from the other side. As you can tell, the, the Magpul scout mount puts the flashlight up pretty parallel with the uh, top of the uh, front sight. And on my previous rifles, I've always had the flashlight mounted uh, down here. So um, we'll see how this works out. I thought I would uh, really dislike the uh, Novatech flashlight in the Desert Tan, but um, it doesn't look too bad. And once I find an IR cap for the front end, um, you know that'll take care of a, a lot of the, uh, the, the tan color. around. So again, um, wrapping it up, that's the Novatech uh, 120 
Um, that's the military issue kit from eBay. Uh, I've seen several of these semi-complete kits on eBay for under fifty dollars. I got this one for thirty-eight dollars. It did not come with the IR cap. It was listed as used, but it looked brand new. Um, I haven't seen any of these kits in black. They've all been in the desert tan, so I don't know if they were made available to the military in black or not. Uh, Novatex website does have the different models of these flashlights, different variations, and they are available in black, if you want to buy it new, that is.